It's happening. The signs of the last day's prophecies, they are happening just as Bible prophecy foretold. And it's revealing that we are nearing the end of this age and the appearance of Lord Jesus Christ for his church. Welcome everyone to the Sunday evening Watch and Pray live stream from Signs of the Last Days Ministry, where we follow the commandment of Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 21 to watch and pray so that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand with the Lord Jesus. This Signs of the Last Days Ministry is here watching with you, and we are praying with you as we are declaring the events happening in the world and in conditions of the world revealing we are nearing the appearance of Lord Jesus in the clouds to catch away his church. So we're here this evening in this Watch and Pray live stream to encourage one another in fellowship to be ready for that appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ as we continue our journey together. This is when we as a last day's church community gather together and watch the signs of the last day's prophecies happening. And we also pray and share together in your testimonies and pray over you and your prayer requests live in this Watch and Pray live stream. And as always, we give thanks for every one of you who are subscribing to and supporting this Signs of the Last Day's ministry with your prayers and with your offerings. We are wholly supported by you, the body of Christ and the world who are led by the Lord Jesus to support his independent Bible prophecy teaching in the world in these last days. You praying and you giving is what enables signs of the last day's ministry to be here and to declare the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ through the signs that are happening of the last day's prophecies in the world and connecting that to the holy prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ. We together are sharing the signs of the nearing appearance of our Lord Jesus, so more realize the Lord is coming soon. Let's pray now here this evening as we get ready to enter into this prophetic time of the Holy Scriptures of Truth and see and watch what is happening in the world right now. There are some amazing signs of the last day's prophecies that have happened this week. And by the help of the Holy Ghost of the Lord Jesus, we are going to share with you what is happening in the world as we prepare, as we watch the signs telling us of the nearing appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just lift your hands as you lift your heart right now. Let's pray together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray now, Lord, in Jesus' name, that the Holy Spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Lord Jesus, let it reveal unto us your holy word of prophecy, that having eyes we may see, having ears we may hear, and give us a heart of good ground to receive and obey the prophetic word of the Lord. We look unto you, our Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. There's news where a massive Jewish altar is now built in Israel where the red heifer sacrifice can now be burned for its ashes to be used in the Jewish purification rites for building the last day's Jewish temple of end time Bible prophecy. The signs are now showing that the red heifer sacrifice can now take place just any day. The land is ready in the correct place. The Jewish high altar that we're showing you this evening, it's ready. They say that the kosher red heifer is ready to where the red heifer sacrifice could be done now at any time on a secret day in a surprise to the world. CBS National News has just reported this weekend how that a high Jewish altar is now specifically built for the red heifer sacrifice 
It has been completed in Israel and is ready to be used on the Mount of Olives. This CBS News report this weekend and other recent reports like Israel's TV Channel 12 News who released an investigative report about the red heifers that were brought to Israel from Texas, which we here at Signs of the Last Days Ministry reported their discovery two and a half years ago. But these reports are showing everything is ready now for the red heifer sacrifice for the third Jewish temple. Now, all along, there have been varying reports about how old the red heifers really are and how old they must be as required for this Jewish sacrifice, with many reports saying that they must be at least three years old. And there have been varying statements between some of the rabbis as to how old the red heifer is required to be for the sacrifice for the Jewish purification ritual. <clears throat> in fact, one Jewish rabbi said that in Jewish practice, a younger red heifer is more likely to fulfill the actual biblical specifications. While other rabbis said, no, no, the requirement is it must be at least three years old. But the biblical fact is that the Torah, the Bible's Old Testament, does not say how old the red heifer is to be for the red heifer sacrifice for Jewish purification. There is no biblical requirement for the red heifer for Jewish purification that it has to be three years old. None. Now, some have confused in the Bible where the Lord God made his covenant with Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. They have confused that with the red heifer requirements for the sacrifice for the Jewish purification rites. But in Genesis chapter 15, the Lord told Abraham to use a three-year-old heifer. But in Genesis chapter 15, that was not a red heifer. And it was not was not for the Jewish ritual purification rites, for that law had not yet even been given. And in Numbers chapter 19, which does lay out the requirements for the red heifer, where it says the red heifer must be without blemish, in which there is no defect, and on which a yoke has never come. But in that scripture, there is absolutely no requirement there as to how old the red heifer must be for the sacrifice to obtain the red heifer ashes for the Jewish purification rituals. There is no biblical age requirement, none, for the age of the red heifer in that sacrifice in the biblical Torah. Where the idea of an age requirement for the red heifer where that comes from is not from the Lord through Moses and the Torah, but it comes from a book of Jewish rabbi literature called the Mishnah, which is a book of rabbi opinions. That's where it came from. Even right now today, the Temple Institute of Israel on its website page, where it goes into details, intricate details about the red heifer sacrifice, they also say this. They say that as far as for the time that the red heifer, the timing of when the red heifer may be used, they say the sages, which that word means the notable rabbis of history. The Jewish Temple Institute on their website says that the sages state that it is valid when it reaches maturity, that is from the beginning of its third year. So we see that even the Jewish Temple Institute also admits that it is the sages are the rabbis of history from the Mishnah book of rabbi opinions that say this, not Moses and the Torah, but rabbi opinions. And rabbi opinions are like ears. They've all got more than one. And since it's human opinion, it can change at any time. And what was declared kosher last month, what was declared not kosher last month can be 
declared as kosher next month if a group of rabbis get together and say so. Rabbis in Israel for the past year have been publicly saying they plan the red heifer ritual sacrifice around September 2024, with that having been put out there as the date for the red heifer sacrifice. But could this be misdirection? with them actually planning to do it secretly earlier instead. And did Palestinian Hamas find this out? And is that why they attacked Israel early in last October to try and divert Israel from the red heifer sacrifice? You see, this is how things get done in the Middle East, especially with Israel. They get done in secret very much so relative to Israel, especially those things that are controversial. And now everything with Israel is more controversial than ever before. And do you not think that if the time of the red heifer sacrifice was made known, that there would not be an uprising of Arabs concerning it to stop it? Do you not think that if the time of the red heifer sacrifice was made known, that Israel's government would not be pressured to stop it? The sacrifice of the red heifer is extremely controversial. That's why the red heifers were transported to the Holy Land in secret and done so with public misdirection of information about them first as to whether they were kosher, and then as to when they would be transported. And then, bam, pow! Suddenly, everyone finds out that the red heifers had already been secretly transported to the Holy Land from Texas, and that there were several of the red heifers so far declared at that time to be kosher. And why did they do it with such misdirection and in such secrecy? because they know the world is hostile to Jewish animal ritual sacrifice, and they did not want any potential trouble that could delay what they want to achieve in preparation of the prophesied third Jewish temple. And do you think the Jews will allow anything to stop them from performing the red heifer ritual sacrifice on the Mount of Olives? with them after waiting now 2,000 years to get to this point? Well, absolutely not. They will use any misdirection and any secrecy necessary to ensure that it happens. The observant Jews do not want to risk losing this opportunity to obtain the ashes of a red heifer. There is way too much momentum. There is way too much expectation that is running absolutely positive for them on this. And every day they wait runs the risk that the red heifers could develop a blemish and become unacceptable to where they cannot be declared kosher any longer. To wait runs that risk. Every day they wait is a race against time that those red heifers will stay absolutely completely red to where they can be used. And to do the red heifer ritual on an expected timing runs the risk of it being disrupted and stopped. And do not be mistaken, among secular Israel and among secular Israeli officials, including, importantly including, the secular Israeli judiciary. There is absolutely no support for the red heifer sacrifice, and they would be definitely willing to stop it. And of course, the Arabs, they all absolutely hate and despise the idea of the Jews having a red heifer and doing this sacrifice on the Mount of Olives next to the Temple Mount, where the Arabs all seeing this as a threat to their control of the Temple Mount, and as a reason for holy war. (laughs) 
and world opinion and the world media, they are absolutely hostile to Jewish sacrifices. So for so many reasons, to do the red heifer ritual sacrifice as early as possible and at a secret time helps to ensure the success of achieving the red heifer sacrifice for the ashes necessary for Jewish ritual purification so they can proceed with what they view as the plan of God. And they believe that this red heifer sacrifice must happen so that nothing is lacking to effectively raise up the prophesied third Jewish temple. So their plan can be that they must burn sooner so they can purify and dedicate later. With them not having had a kosher red heifer for 2,000 years, and now they have one, how can they run the risk of taking a chance of anything going wrong. And I've warned this last day's church community before, and I warn you again, that things in the Middle East get done in secret, especially when it comes to Israel, to where you just wake up one day and bam, pow, wham, there it is, plastered all over the news, that this or that has happened in Israel and the Middle East with absolutely no warning. And the reality of the Middle East is that negotiations or planning really always happens in secret. The Middle East operates on two levels. One being in secret behind closed doors where things really get planned and really get done. And the other is in public, where they say another thing altogether as misdirection. misdirection. <laughs> and then suddenly, boom, in public one day to everyone's surprise, something has been agreed. Something has, been ha something has happened. It's just like the Jewish government. They always say, they always tell the Arab leaders and officials, they always tell the U.S. and the nations, they always say that they are going to keep the status quo on the Temple Mount. But now today you have Jews praying on the Temple Mount, which breaks the status quo. And that decision by the Israeli government to allow that was made in secret. While in public, they have kept saying something else for consumption by the Arabs and the nations. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected and glorified Jew that we Gentiles worship as our Lord and Savior, Christ the Lord said that this is how it will work. He warned of secrecy around things at the end of the church age in biblical fact. Christ Jesus said, this is how the end of the church age will come. He said that it would happen in secret. Christ said in Matthew chapter 24 and verses 36 through 44, that when he comes as Lord of his believers, when they are taken up unto him, he said that it will happen in secret. He said it would be just like a thief coming in secret when you don't expect it. That's what Christ Jesus the Lord said. And all the prophetic dominoes are already being put in place by the Lord. In the world, in the Middle East, in Israel, in Jerusalem, and in the Jews, where they are all lined up perfectly to where when that first one is tipped over, then all the rest of the dominoes will quickly fall in rapid succession to where one day, soon, the world will just wake up and find that those narrow-minded people, those people they accused of being narrow-minded people who insisted on following all the actual preaching of Jesus and his apostles in their holy scriptures of the narrow gate, and the narrow way that only leads to eternal life, as Jesus Christ, they, Jesus Christ said. One day the world's just going to wake up, and those people are gone. They are gone. 
They can't find them anywhere. And just like that, secretly, the church age of grace will be over with with the true church of Jesus, the body of Christ, it will not be seen on the earth. It cannot be found on the earth as the grace has been lifted with the restrainer removed. And the news of the missing people, the news of the missing people reports, it will be quickly drowned out and washed away because of what immediately starts happening with Israel in the world. When the restrainer disappears, taken by Jesus, immediately it's going to start happening with Israel in the world. Because now that Jesus has his church, the bride, with him, Christ Jesus said in his revelation that he would start opening the seals of heaven's scroll, our book of prophecy, which the first thing that Jesus unseals and reveals is the Antichrist. In Revelation chapter 6, with the first seal that Jesus Christ opens and reveals, the Antichrist, whose big deal with Israel will be revealed as all the prophetic dominoes rapidly fall in quick succession, making splash after splash in the news, as Christ will be relentless, unsealing the prophecies, and then he has the trumpets blown, and then he has the bowls of his wrath poured out. It happens all in a short, short time of only seven years upon a world of disobedience that would not obey all scripture preached by the Lord Jesus and his chosen apostles. But what triggers all of the Revelation chapter 6 through chapter 19 prophecies of wrath to start that is done in secret by Christ Jesus. That's why right now the Antichrist is hidden away and in secret. And the Antichrist will not be revealed until the Lord Jesus reveals him. Only Christ Jesus is allowed to reveal the Antichrist. No one else. All these books who say King Charles or Trump or whoever is Antichrist, they are false and fictitious by false prophets and false teachers who are usurpers, not appointed to reveal the Antichrist. Only Lord Jesus Christ is appointed to do that. No one else. The sealed scroll of prophecy in heaven is unsealed only by Christ Jesus, who alone is worthy. No one else is worthy. And Christ Jesus describes in his revelation to the world that the church age will end first at the end of Revelation chapter 3, and then Jesus in his revelation in chapter 4, crowns his church of Old Testament saints and New Testament saints, symbolized by the 24 elders representing the Old Testament saints by the 12 patriarchs and the New Testament saints by the 12 apostles. Christ Jesus clearly describes in Revelation 4 that he crowns his church with the gold crown of eternal life which Paul, James, Peter, and Jesus in their scriptures said that the crown of glory of eternal life is only to the church of Jesus, saved by his grace through the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name, the only name under heaven by which we all must be saved. That's why the apostles of Jesus preached baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And after the secret things are fulfilled with the church of Jesus gathered together unto him in heaven, then the day of Christ, the day of Christ the Lamb's wrath is come. In Revelation chapter 6, just as Paul described in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, as the man of sin, the son of perdition, is then revealed by Christ, who will be the one that sits as God in the Jewish temple of God. Because 
He, the body of Christ, who now restrains, has been taken out of the way, and then that evil one is revealed by Christ Jesus. And what brings all of that prophecy fulfillment is the secret thing being done in secret away from the eyes of the world. The Holy Scriptures teach, as in Deuteronomy 29, that the secret things belong to the Lord our God. And those things which are revealed belong to his children. And the Psalms teach that it is in the secret place of the Most High where we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And it is from there that the Lord God reveals his secrets from the secret place, the Lord reveals his secrets secretly to his servants, the prophets, according to Amos. And Christ said that we fast and pray to our Father who is in the secret place, who sees in secret. And Christ's apostle said the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ is according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret. Since the world began, that is now made manifest by the prophetic scriptures, made known to all nations in the last days of prophecy. <clears throat> and already, the land as required on the Mount of Olives, looking over into the Holy Mount, where the holy place is located, that land has already been purchased. For the red heifer sacrifice, it was purchased years ago in secret, away from the eyes of the world. Already a kosher red heifer to be sacrificed was found in Texas and secretly shipped to Israel, where it is now kept in secret in the Holy Land in a secure, undeclosed location in Israel behind a closed door that has Lock and key, and unknown to the world, a massive high altar has already been built in Israel for the red heifer to be sacrificed on, which pictures show that this huge high altar seems to be behind some huge earthen berms or hills that surround it and hide it from view. And the altar looks as though it was built to where it could be quickly disassembled and moved to the location on the Mount of Olives and then quickly reassembled for use. This completed high altar for the Red Heifer sacrifice just reported this weekend by CBS News was part of a news article CBS did on how they were describing how that these red cows is what triggered Hamas to attack Israel on the Black Sabbath of October 7th which I give CBS credit for even reporting this. This is not the kind of thing that usually gets into the mainstream. So to CBS's credit, they reported it. But still, CBS is slow reporting this, for this Signs of the Last Days ministry reported this previously months ago last year, just weeks after October 7th, in a live stream titled Red Heifer's Secret to October 7th Hamas Holy War on Israel, where we reported, we reported that the red heifers were the secret to understanding why Hamas said that they made their surprise heinous attack on Israel so to prevent the sacrifice, the red heifer sacrifice, from happening. And then we even warned several months before the October 7th Hamas attack that Hamas had said that they viewed the red heifers as a threat to their mosque on the holy hill in Jerusalem. And we warned several months before October 7th last year. We warned months beforehand in a live stream titled, Arabs Warn, Red Heifer's Arrival is a Sign of Holy Mount War. We warned that Hamas could launch a holy war on Israel over the red heifers. And that's exactly what happened after we warned about it on October 7th. It's really important, folks, that you tune in to all our Signs of the Last Days Revealed broadcasts because down inside of them, we share important prophetic information that the Lord has allowed us to see and to know. 
that connect directly to what is going to prophetically happen. And also during events and after events, the Lord also reveals to us how events directly connect to the end time prophecies. And often the titles of the live streams just cannot fully capture all the things that we will reveal from the prophecies in the live stream. We only get from YouTube about 51 characters that they allow to show up in the title before they cut our titles off. And, and, and I don't know if you've ever tried to put titles together just with 51 characters. It is extremely difficult for us. So the point is you can never know just by the title of all the prophetic revelations that will be taught on within that session. You really need to always make sure you tune in and watch our videos and watch our live streams because we are near the end of this age of grace. The signs are screaming that at us. And now the land is ready. The Jewish high altar is ready. They say a kosher red heifer is ready to where the red heifer sacrifice can now be done at any time on a secret day in a surprise to the world to where suddenly the reports on media could flow out of Israel and the Middle East on it's happened. Where suddenly it's reported that Jewish priests are now walking on the Temple Mount where they are spreading about the ashes of a red heifer all across the Temple Mount for the purpose of purification. So to sanctify the Holy Hill for all Jews to be able to ascend the Holy Mount for worship. And that these ashes of a red heifer are from a purification ritual ceremony that was just performed in secret on the Mount of Olives. And that these Jewish priests are going about spreading ashes on the Temple Mount. They are doing that at the instruction of the Jewish rabbis who are saying that ancient Jewish law dictates that the red heifer's ashes are required to purify the area before Jews can ascend. It could happen just like that. And then there would be a mass event where just like for the priestly blessing each year, you know how there is just literally tens of thousands of Jews that are just smushed into the plaza at the Western Wall. After they secretly have that red heifer sacrifice and they have those ashes and then those Jewish priests secretly go up on the Temple Mount and spread those ashes around on the Temple Mount at the instruction of the Jewish rabbis. And then with the rabbis saying that it is now pure, it is sanctified to where Jews can worship there then suddenly there can be a mass event that happens to where literally those tens of thousands of Orthodox Jews that push into the plaza for the priestly blessing all every year, suddenly they all ascend. They've been previously held back by the rabbis for decades, and now that it's been sanctified for the Jews to ascend, now they all ascend the Holy Mount in a mass event that literally overwhelms the Arabs at the Haram al-Sharif. And then this incident, triggered by a secret red heifer sacrifice, can unleash a massive holy war that fulfills the prophecy of Asaph of Psalm 83. Believe me, there will be absolutely major reactions to the event of the red heifer sacrifice in ashes. The Arabs will hugely react. My goodness, Hamas already has. Just because of the mere threat of a red heifer sacrifice being done, they started their holy war on Israel on October 7th to try to prevent the red heifer sacrifice. Can you just imagine the response of the Arabs, and then the nations 
they will also react, saying that it's a provocation by Israel. So then Israel's government will also have to react. And the last day's prophecies will accelerate moving forward. It's very, very possible that the final great Arab-Israeli war of the prophecy of Asaph in Psalm 83 could be triggered by the red heifer sacrifice. The war going on right now between biblical Philistia, which is Gaza, with Israel, according to what Hamas said themselves out of their very own mouths, it was started over the red heifer. And now the land is ready on the Mount of Olives. The high temple, excuse me, the high altar is ready. The kosher red heifer is ready any day. A secret red heifer ceremony can happen. And then you wake up and the headlines are screaming from the holy land, from the holy city, from the holy mount. It is time, high time, to get ready according to the preaching, all the preaching of Jesus Christ and his chosen apostles in their holy scriptures. It's time now to get ready according to what they said. Because these events and conditions that I've described to you this evening that are happening right now in the world are connecting directly to the end time as warning signs of the last day's prophecies revealing it's time to prepare now for the nearing appearance of Lord Jesus Christ for his church. It's time now to make the decision to believe and obey the commandments of Lord Jesus Christ and his chosen apostles. As we near the end of this time of grace, we're in secret. Christ Jesus is going to end it. I ask you to type into the chat right now in this Watch and Pray live stream. I ask you to type into the chat if the word of God has stirred you. Oh, I feel the, the nearness of the presence of the Holy Ghost of Jesus. If his Holy Spirit is stirring you, I ask you to type into the chat right now. I make the decision to obey the commandments of Jesus Christ and his chosen apostles. Or if you're watching this as a video later, as thousands will, type into the comments under this video. I make the decision to obey the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ and his chosen apostles. We're going to take a moment right now. Here in just a, a, a short while, we're going to pray live over you and your prayer requests. We've had so many wonderful miracles happen by our Lord, Savior, and Healer, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to pray. But right now, we're going to give a moment of prayer for souls to be saved in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that faith in Christ Jesus is being born in your heart right now. Only faith in Christ can bring you to Jesus the Savior. You can only receive his grace through obedience to the faith in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 5 through 6. And Jesus said that if you love him, you must keep his commandments. That's in John 14 and 15. And Christ said that without obedience, faith is in vain. He said that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and verses 24 through 27, where Jesus said that only those that do his words, which means that you must believe and obey the commandments of Jesus Christ, and we all must obey the commandment of Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 3 and verse 3, where Lord Jesus commanded that unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in John chapter 3 and verse 5, Jesus commanded that you must be born again of the water, born again of the water and the spirit, or you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Jesus commanded in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 19, that only his chosen apostles could tell us how to be born again, where he gave his apostle the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Only the apostle could tell how to open the door to enter the kingdom of God. 
with Lord Jesus saying there that what his apostle preached was bound or recorded in heaven, which is eternal for the church of Jesus. And the apostles in the acts of their preaching in all their holy scriptures, they told us how to be born again through the water in the name of the Lord Jesus' baptism and through the Holy Spirit of Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2, they preached it when Lord Jesus started his church in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 10, they preached it when he started his church among the Gentiles. And in Acts chapter 19, as the Lord Jesus spread his church among the Gentile nations, the Apostle Paul was obedient to the commandments of the Lord Jesus and the Apostle Peter. As the Apostle Paul preached the same exact thing as preached by the Apostle Peter, who had the keys to the kingdom of God. With what the apostles preached, it's bound, recorded eternally in heaven for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I asked you this evening, type into the chat or into the comments now. I make the decision to obey the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ and his chosen apostles. We must get ready now. Only the preaching of Jesus and his apostles is the word of God settled forever in heaven. No other person's words, no other person's organization, no other bylaws of any religious organization, no preacher, I don't care how popular they are, their words are not forever settled in heaven. Only the preaching of Jesus and his apostles written in their holy scriptures, is forever settled in heaven, and we must be saved by that word. We must get ready now, so to escape all these things that will come to pass in the wrath of the tribulation of Revelation prophecy that will come upon the world of disobedience, who choose not to obey all the commandments of Lord Jesus and his apostles in their holy scriptures. Make the commitment in faith, in obedience in your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And right now, I want you to say this prayer with us as this online prophetic church, the signs of the last day's church, prays now with you. I want you to join me and them in this prayer to the Lord Jesus, saying it out loud, meaning it from your heart. It's a prayer of obedience, of repentance and obedience to follow Jesus Christ. Lift your hands now as you lift your heart and say this prayer with us. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe on you as the Son of God that you died for me. You rose from the dead for me that I may be saved and complete in you. I repent. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Save me as the Savior and Lord of my life. Lead me now going forward in following you in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah, church. Praise God, signs of the last day's church community. We're believing that people, that since people willingly said that prayer, that they're making a decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in their life, that they're starting or renewing a relationship with him. That can be a new beginning that leads to the wonderful future that Jesus Christ wants for everyone. Now, it's very important to continue your experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, after this live stream later, you can go to our website, signsofthelastdays.org.org. Signsofthelastdays.org. You can go there to our homepage, and then you can go all the way down to the bottom, down to the footer in smaller print, and there you'll find our email address. To where if you need help finding someone to biblically baptize you and pray with you, where you are in your location. You can contact us here at Signs of the Last Days Ministry to help you find someone. Again, that contact information is down at the bottom of our website, signsofthelastdays.org. Go all the way down to the bottom to the footer in smaller print. Find our email address, then email us. 
Give us the name of your town, the name of your state, and your zip code, and we'll do our best to help you have a location where you can be biblically baptized and prayed for in your area. We've had people from all across the United States, north, south, east, west, contact us. We've helped them. We've even helped people in other countries as well that have contacted us. The Lord Jesus Christ is spreading his born-again salvation truth around the world, getting people ready for the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church. And this signs of the last day's ministry is an important part of that. Amen. In Jesus' holy name, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we're about to pray over you and your prayer requests live in this Watch and Pray live stream chat. So you get ready for that. And one prayer request that we here at Signs of the Last Days Ministry has is that if you appreciate biblical prophecy ministry like this, we ask you to support this ministry and channel. First of all, with your prayers. We need your prayer support. Please pray for us every day. We pray for this Signs of the Last Days Church community every day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you also please pray for the signs of the last day's ministry? Pray that the Lord leads us and guides us, anoints us, empowers us through his prophetic spirit and prophetic word in these last days. Hallelujah. And then also, would you support, pray about to the Lord, ask the Lord how he would have you to support this signs of the last day's ministry with your, with your offerings as the Lord would lead you. We truly depend upon the Lord and his body of Christ in the world to supply the needs. We have no other support. And we only ask that people follow the teaching of the Lord Jesus and his apostles. Lord Jesus taught us in Luke 6 to give. He commanded us to give. And then it will be given to you running over into your bosom. This is the principle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus also confirmed that in Matthew chapter 6, he said to seek First, the kingdom of God. Don't put God at the end. Give God your first fruits. Put God first. Don't think that you're truly worshiping the Lord unless you're also giving your offerings unto him as well. Your worship is incomplete. And don't think it's adequate. If you're waiting, if you're putting the Lord at the end of the line and just giving him the dregs of whatever's left over, the Lord God said, seek first the kingdom of God. And the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ taught the same thing as Lord Jesus commanded. The apostle in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 commanded, let each one give as they purpose in their heart. That's the reason we say pray and ask the Lord through his holy word and his holy spirit to lead you about your giving to this ministry. And then just like the Lord Jesus said, the apostle also said, he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. As God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. These are the commandments of the Lord Jesus and his apostles and their principles. So pray to the Lord about how he would have you to securely give your offering at the website, signsofthelastdays.org, on the giving page. There you can securely give your offering, no matter the amount, whatever the Lord leads you. We leave that between you and the Lord. And then you're a part. As you give, you're a part of this ministry of signs of the last days to where we are helping more people realize Jesus is coming soon. And also pray about becoming a partner in prophecy to where on that giving page, you also check the recurring contribution button on the giving page to where you're giving each month is made Easily faithful by checking that recurring contribution button on the giving page. Or if you would like, you can also mail in your offering with a check or a money order, as many others do to our mailing address. It is also on the giving page on the website, signsofthelastdays.org, and also our PayPal link is there as well. And we want to say thank you to all of our wonderful partners in prophecy, all of you subscribers and supporters of this channel of Signs of the Last Days Ministry that are in this Last Days Prophetic Church community. You praying and you giving makes all of this that's happening tonight to be possible. Now the Lord Jesus said to watch 
And we have just watched some amazing signs of the last day's prophecies that are happening. But then Jesus told us to couple together with our watching prayer. He said, watch and pray. And that's what we do in these watch and pray live streams. There's a lot of folks out there that are supposedly teaching prophecy, Bible prophecy. But you don't find, at least I've never come across one, to where they are a full-fledged church like the Signs of the Last Days Church, to where we preach the prophetic word of God, we teach the holy prophecies of the Lord, and then we also pray. We get down and pray together over you and your needs. We're getting ready. We're seriously getting ready for the trumpet to sound. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming soon. And it's time to get ready now. So we're, we're teaching, we're watching, and we're praying. And we're fixing to build our faith with your testimonies. And then we're going to pray together live over you and your prayer requests. So you have your prayer requests ready here in just a little while to put it into the Watch and Pray live stream chat. And we're going to pray in Jesus' name. And we've had some wonderful Things come in the mail from this last day's church community. We watch over you. We look forward to you. We pray over you. We are concerned over you. And, and we want to we want to say thank you to uh, to we, we were gifted this wonderful book by Aaron. Thank you, Aaron, for your wonderful gift of your book that you wrote that you gifted us. Thank you so much. We've read quite a bit of it already. And your, your prose that you wrote was has such convictions in it. it. It's powerful. Thank you, Aaron, for your work that you've done. Our compliments to you for, for doing such a work. It's wonderful. And, and we, are, we, we thank you for blessing us with this. It, it is a blessing to us. Thank you, Aaron, for, for your book that you sent. Hallelujah. So wonderful. Amen. And then also, we received a letter from, from Enhay in New Jersey, beautiful state of New Jersey. Thank you for your lovely, beautiful card and also your, your wonderful offering. I tell you, you just don't realize Sometimes, you know, we're going through a month and, we, and, and you know, the offerings haven't really come in and, and we're just wondering, well, what, where, how's it going to happen this month? Where's it going to come from this month? How's it going to work out? And then it's amazing how that, how that the body of Christ supplies the need and then suddenly a, a wonderful offering comes in or many offerings come in and, and the need is supplied to where this ministry is able to be here, this ministry is able to do all the work of God that we do. Amen. None of the things that we do, it's the gospel is of Jesus Christ is free. Absolutely free. The word of God is free. The Holy Spirit of God, these things have been paid for by our Lord Jesus Christ, and he gives them freely to us. But the work of delivering that gospel to the world it takes resources and people to do that. And, and this wonderful community, you follow the Lord and you respond and, and the Lord triggers you and, and, you, and you just like this wonderful card and this wonderful offering from Enhe. Beautiful. And she says, Dear Pastor, thank you so much for your ministries. Truly God's hand is upon your ministries. Thank you for your sincere wisdom from God. God bless you and everything the, the ministry is doing and saving souls. Love in Christ in, high, in New Jersey. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, we're praying for you. In the name of Christ Jesus the Lord. We got this letter from, from uh, Angela in California, beautiful California. Thank you for your letter and your wonderful offering also. And Angela says, Brother William, thank you for your very relevant news on Israel. Your political 
your political perspective appears to be ahead of other news. That must be because of your diligent research, which is very thorough. It's really because of the leading and the help of the Lord. Some, I tell you truly, Angela, that there are times whenever we do the teaching, like in a watch and a pray, a live stream, and then the next day we just shake our heads and we just say, where did that revelation come from? Where did that, how did we know that? How did we do that? I tell you truly, it's nothing about us. It is all because of the mighty work of the Lord Jesus Christ through his holy scriptures of truth and his Holy Spirit of truth in these last days. And the reason that we're able to share these things before they even happen is that the Lord shows us these things. The Lord reveals these, are, these, are, these things don't belong to us. They belong to the Lord. He shares it with whom he will. And we're, we're able to be blessed to do this because the Lord Jesus Christ does it and allows it. All praise be to Jesus Christ, the Lord our God. But thank you for, for your blessing of what you're saying. And then she says, may God keep you online until he comes respectfully, Angela in California. Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much for that wonderful blessing of that letter. And then there's Ronald in Ohio. Amen. Thank you, Ronald, for your faithful monthly support of the Signs of the Last Days Church ministry. Thank you. From Ohio, Ronald, for your offering. And then there's Irma, also in beautiful California. Thank you, Irma, for your offering, blessing this ministry. We're praying for you in Jesus' name. And Cecil, Cecil in Georgia, Marietta, Georgia. Thank you so much for your many letters and your offerings. You're, you're such an integral part of the Signs of the Last Days Church ministry. Thank you all the way from Georgia. And then Derek from Virginia, faithful in his giving each and every month. And thank you, Derek, for your encouragement. He says, I pray you and your family are well. I'm so happy to be a part of your ministry that is reaching and touching lives. I don't feel that I do a lot for the Lord, so I am glad I can partner with this ministry. I am glad that we are doing our part to work in the body of Christ. Amen, Derek. Amen. You're so right. And then he says, there are so many things going on that the Lord has happening to show that he is coming soon. He says, I see how we are close to World War III. We are so close to the rapture and the tribulation. So many signs are coming to a head. Only the restrainer is holding it back. You're exactly right. I am asking for prayer for friends and others who are discouraged. I'm also asking for prayer for my family and people who are not saved to come to the Lord. I also ask for prayer for my friend Tracy who had surgery for quick recovery. And I ask prayer for my mom's health and her home. We have called those out unto the Lord and before the body of Christ in Jesus' name. And we're going to pray in the name of the Lord. He says, I'm sending you an offering to help in the ministry. I'm also praying for you, your family, in this ministry. I pray the Lord uses it to reach souls. Keep going on the path the Lord is leading you on. Keep up the work for the Lord. I will meet you when we get to heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God is at work. These, these, these things, these, all of these goings on, these, these are the workings of the Lord, the workings of the Spirit of the Lord, and the Word of the Lord that is working in this last day's church community. Don't you feel it? Don't you feel how the, the Lord is working in the signs of the last day's church? The Lord is getting us ready, folks. And then Cheryl from Florida. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for your offering that you sent. Bless you. We're praying for you in Jesus' name. And then Clarissa in North Carolina. Oh, it's gorgeous up there. North Carolina. Thank you, Clar Clarissa, for your offering in the work of God. Hallelujah. 
Blessings and prayers upon all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of you who are giving your offering securely on the website, signsofthelastdays.org, on the giving page, I want you to know that each time your offering is given, it's, the system sends us an email with your name telling us that you've made that offering. And we pray over all of you that are giving your offerings online. We call out your name until the Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray for you in Jesus' name, and we thank you for your offerings, your faithful giving, and we always pray in that the Lord blesses you according to his scriptures of sowing in abundance, and the Lord leads you in all of his spirit and in all of his truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him in Jesus' wonderful name name. Oh, glory. It's time for the staff of testimony and the shofar of Zion, the trumpet of Zion. Amen. We have this testimony and you need to be given your testimony. It's just like a staff that supports us in our walk with God. Hallelujah. Carolyn says, the reason God is bringing judgment is because people are rejecting Christ. The rapture is going to happen Soon, he's trying to get our attention. You're so right. Signs of the last day's prophecies are warning us. Get ready! Because Jesus Christ, the Lord, is telling us. He told us when he was here on the earth in his holy scriptures. He told us that when you see these signs happening, to look up. Look up! Your redemption is drawing near. Thank you, Carolyn. Betty says, Jesus will come get us just like he said. Amen. Betty, you're so right. And then Bitter Silence says, thank you for all your videos and knowledge. Thank you all for being a part of this Signs of the Last Days Church community. Doug testifies and says, what we are witnessing here now is an escalation of birth pains and prophecies as foretold in the Bible. Sooner than later, Lord Jesus Christ is going to return for his believers in church and take them home to glory. Glory to God. I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready for the streets of gold. Keeping my record white. Watching both day and night. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Thank you, Doug. Fleiss says, I was just, it was just blistering hot here in Southeast Georgia. It gets hot here, but it was definitely hotter than normal. Jesus is coming. And Fleiss is saying that in reference to the video we just did about how that there's just amazing signs that are happening here in Texas. Have you noticed the pattern that Texas is at the forefront of everything right now? Where we are, we're here in Texas. We're on the Gulf Coast of Texas. And here where Signs of the Last Days Ministry is in Texas. Texas is on the forefront of everything that's going on in the world. Where did the kosher red heifers come from that are in Israel right now? from right here in Texas. Where is the 2024 solar eclipse, the great American eclipse of the sun in 2024? Where is it going to start? Right here in Texas. Why are we having the greatest storms of fire in our history in Texas? Why are we having record temperatures in winter? Why are we having record like summer temperatures, triple digit temperatures here in Texas in wintertime? Why is this all happening in Texas? Why is it that Texas is on the forefront of dealing with the open borders of our country? Why is it that Texas is at the forefront? It's because we are stirring the powers and principalities in the name of Jesus Christ as we are declaring the signs of the coming of Jesus from Texas. And there is warfare 
spiritual warfare that is going on in the heavenlies over Texas. And I had another powerful, strong teaching that I was going to share tonight until the Lord turned me around to teach what I did teach because of the massive sign that happened just this weekend. But the Lord willing, this next week, if he wills, I'm going to, to teach about what I'm mentioning right now, this next week. It's going to be about the forefront of the heavenly eclipse starting in Texas and the signs of the last day's prophecies that are manifesting from Texas all across the United States and across the world. So pray about that. Sober and watching says, let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, we're going to reap such great rewards, such as the world eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the wonderful things that God has prepared for those that love him. Thank you, sober and watching. And then angel, angel says, and this, she's saying this in relationship to what I, I think I, I taught on this last Watch and Pray live stream about that the animal attacks are increasing as we are nearing the time of the beast of Revelation prophecy. An angel says, this happened to me two weeks ago. I've been feeding the birds outside, including ravens. I pray over them. And I told the ravens, I will take care of you, but re you remember to take care of me like you did with Elijah. Isn't that precious? But I tell you, when I would go outside, I felt as if I was being watched and not by people. Then two weeks ago, I was going outside to feed the birds and the ravens were calling really loud and very angry. And I turned around and I saw a coyote, a wild coyote, not even 25 feet away from me where there was a fence. And that's when, she says, the two ravens came and attacked the coyote. I never heard of, of that happening. Have you? I've never heard of ravens attacking a wild coyote. And they started chasing the coyote and chased him all the way off of her property. She says, I have faith that Yahweh used his ravens to protect me. Wow. A miracle. Hallelujah. She says, now when I go outside, I have my head on a swivel. But she says, thank you, Lord, Yahushua, Hamashiach, for your protection. Oh, we've had so many testimonies that this church community has given back to Signs of the Last Days church community about miracles that the Lord has done, protections, deliverances, provisions, healings. Oh, Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He's our keeper and our provider. In Jesus' name, thank you for that wonderful testimony. Irvin, it's either Irvine or Irvin, E-R-V-I-N. I'm, I'm, you know who I'm talking about. Lord bless you. He says, thank you, brother. I love listening to you. You mentioned Adam and born into sin. The words of Jesus in the New Testament, he says, let the dead bury the dead, which implies that people are the living dead that need to be born again into the Spirit. And it's necessary because flesh and blood, Jesus said, will not inherit the kingdom of God. We have to ascend like Christ Jesus did. May God bless you and your family and ministry in our country and that everyone who sees your message will come to Christ Jesus and be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Irvin. And then someone with a handle of Jesus has this. I like that. Jesus has this said that April 8th with the eclipse is a high watch for many born agains in Jesus. We are seeing major signs in the stars and moon and sun. Rapture is any time. Many see it and feel it. Hallelujah. And we've been talking about this. We're getting close. Jesus is coming. Oh, the Lord 
is coming. We are given the testimonies, the staff of testimonies, and we're blowing the trumpet in Zion. Here at Signs of the Last Days Ministry, we're getting ready to leave this world. And it's time to pray. We're going to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you right now. Oh, I feel a surge of the Holy Ghost of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're with us. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, there am I in the midst of them. Lord, we have two to three hundred here right now. What a magnification of the power and of the Spirit of the Lord God do we have right now in the name of Jesus. Put in your prayer requests right now into the Watch and Pray live stream chat. We're fixing to pray. I, I told you, we've had miracle, hallelujah, after miracle, by the power of the mighty name of Jesus and by the power of the mighty Holy Ghost of Jesus. We've had people to receive the Holy Spirit. We've had people to be baptized through and during the signs of the last days, watch and pray, live stream. We've had people be healed. We've had people testify how the Lord healed their body. We've had people even testify how the Lord has raised up people from the dead. I'll never forget, we had this one lady. She asked us to pray for her grandchild that was at the door of death. It had been born with problems. We began to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then she came back and gave the testimony just a week or two later, saying that whenever the signs of the last day's church began to pray in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord touched that child and it began to be raised up and the Lord raised that child up at that time in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord, it, it, it's a complete package. He's our Savior. He's our healer. He's our deliverer, our keeper, our provider. He's everything. He's the Lord, the mighty God. And we are his children. Put your prayer request in. We're fixing to pray. Someone says, pray for my eye that the cataracts fall off. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, he, he specializes in healing eyesight. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, be it unto thee in Jesus' name. And everyone else is saying, pray. Someone's saying, pray for my son that he'll, excuse me, that he'll be drawn unto the Lord. Someone else said, pray for me to escape poverty. The Lord knows you have need of these things. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto thee. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, put your prayer request in right now. We have this prayer request that was sent in by Regina. Regina says, please be in agreement with me for Michael to get out of the sin and disobedience to God. And also pray for my friend Maria, who is dying of cancer, for her salvation and for her unsafe family. Regina, we have called out your prayer requests before the Lord of glory and before the mount of his congregation, his church. In the name of Jesus, we agree together with you in Jesus' name for the mighty, wonderful works of God to be done. Hallelujah. And then grit in gravel, grit in gravel. He says, this is Anthony from Riverside, California. Please pray for me to have my Father's will done in my life that I may follow after him wholeheartedly. I need prayer to keep the armor of God on 24 by 7 to go in the direction that he wants me to go. Anthony, in the name of Jesus, we agree together with you over your prayer request. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And now we're going to pray together corporately over you and your prayer requests in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you right now to lift your hands toward heaven, toward the Lord. As you lift your heart, when you lift your hands, it lifts your heart, your soul to God. Call on the name of Jesus right now. Call out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we worship our Lord. We worship our Savior. We worship our healer, our keeper, our deliverer. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth 
and in us as it is in heaven. I pray that kingdom come and thy will be done in these prayer requests that have been sent in, my Lord. I pray that kingdom come and thy will be done in each one of these prayer requests in the Watch and Pray live stream chat. Lord God, we're not playing. We're serious, Lord. We're calling upon you. We're believing upon you. We're believing in the mighty name of Jesus. We're believing in the mighty Holy Ghost of the Lord Jesus. We're believing in your wonderful, glorious work of salvation on the cross of Calvary. We believe in all of your word of God. In the glorious name of Jesus, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, minister, Lord, to every need, to every prayer request, and let everyone say in Jesus' holy name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we're praying. We're believing. There is a power and an authority here this evening in this Watch and Pray live stream. In prayer, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want you right now to take your hand. I want you to put it upon your head. And I want you to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I plead the blood of Jesus over me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray right now that your Holy Ghost rules and reigns in my body, soul, and spirit. I pray right now that the name of the Lord Jesus reside over me in Jesus' name. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth in me as it is in heaven. In Jesus' holy name, I anoint myself with prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. By our acts of faith do we show that we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful, powerful, powerful Watch and pray live stream we have had here this evening in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we were getting ready for this Watch and Pray live stream this week, and as we were reading through your, your comments under the videos and the live streams, and we were looking at your prayer requests, and we were thinking about your testimonies and thinking about this community, we, we just felt such a blessing in our heart to be a part of this Signs of the Last Days Church community. It's wonderful. It's glorious what the Lord is doing in these last days through church communities like this one to get people ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you, there are powerful, powerful revelations that the Lord has coming for us as we go forward until that secret event happens and we're gone in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We have such wonderful things to look forward to in this Signs of the Last Days Ministry Church. You want to make sure you're a part of it. And you want to make sure that you're inviting other people to be a part of this. I tell you, the world <clears throat> and the big tech of the world that, that owns social media, they will cancel this kind of ministry if they can. And we have noticed that this year, there was a change of manner, management. There was a change of rulership at YouTube this year at the end of 2023 going into 2024. They have new management now, new executive leadership. And we have noticed since the first of this year how that YouTube has been shadow banning us to where they are not in their algorithm putting us out there for people to be exposed to signs of the last day's ministry prophecy teaching. So it's left up to us, to community. It's left up to you for you to get in there and put in testimonies and comments in, under the uh, live streams and the videos. It's going to be left up to you to share all across all of your social media signs of the last day's ministry teaching. We must help people to know Jesus is coming soon, and we must share these powerful things that the Lord is revealing to this community. And unless we do it, it won't get done. 
but together with the Lord, with, together with the, the miracle power of the Lord Jesus, we can see mighty things done for the Lord Jesus Christ. So community, be an evangelist. And also, we're going to be sharing as we go forward through this year until the Lord comes. We're going to be sharing with you some things and reminding you of some things because it's going to get worse. If the Lord tarries and we get to the end of this year, it's going to get worse. All of this opposition to the, to the true gospel ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's some things that we need to be aware, aware of and some things that we need to be preparing for and we need to be doing as we go forward so that we can continue as a community and continue as a ministry. So you be watching for that. We're going to be talking about that as we go forward. Praise God. We have our challenges and we are in perilous times, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Glory to God. Thank the Lord for his blessings that are upon us. The Lord bless you as you go out and the Lord bless you as you come in. The Lord make you the head and not the tail. If any speak evil against you, the Lord turn it to your blessing. And the Lord establish you in his ways and make evil to be afraid and depart from you. And the Lord open up to you his good treasure and bless all the work of your hands. Grace to you, peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And say in Jesus' name, we receive the blessing now in the mighty name of our Lord. We receive it in faith in Jesus' name. Thank you for being in this Watch and Pray live stream. As we have watched the signs of the last day's prophecies happening, and we have prayed to be ready for the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't, please click the subscribe button on this channel. Click the bell and get all notifications for our live streams and videos. Community, be that evangelist. Sharing this channel, its videos and live stream events. Click the thumbs up on all the videos. Place positive comments. Help us to get out the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ that he's coming soon. And remember, as we watch the signs of the last day's prophecies happening, you keep looking up because it's telling us, as Lord Jesus said, that our redemption is drawing near. And as born-again believers in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus, we're not expecting the end. We're looking for the beginning of our wonderful future that is in the Lord Jesus Christ forever. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. We're praying for you. Signs of the times are everywhere. There's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eyes upon the eastern sky.